Good morning, everyone. I am back home, as you can see, and I'm happy to start recording videos once again. So, uh, awesome. All right, so the subject today is really about the DXY versus the price of silver. Is there a correlation there? Um, that's what I'm going to be looking at this morning. I just posted uh, something on Twitter showing the charts. But um, what I want to make sure we do every time we do one of these videos is really look at the definitions of each thing that we're talking about, just so we kind of reshift our minds to really focus on, on the actual definition of things so we know what they are, uh, or else we're doing this for nothing, in my opinion. So, so since we're looking at DXY versus silver, well, we'll look at the definition of both those terms. So um, the DXY, the US dollar index, is used to measure the value of the dollar against a bas basket of six foreign currencies. All right, so it is a comparison. It's a, a bit of a ratio chart, I guess. Um, it compares it against the euro, the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, British pound, and the Swedish krona. So um, this is important to know. So one of the most important barometers uh, for global currencies is the dollar index, DXY which measures the value of the US dollar versus a basket of global currencies. The basket of currencies essentially consists of nations that have significant trading relationship with the US and are also hard floating currencies. All right, pretty clear. Um, the dollar index is calculated by routers in real time every 15 seconds based on the spot prices of the index's underlying currencies. Uh, how's it weighted? Uh, important to look at that. The index is designed, maintained, and published by the ICE Intercontinental Exchange Inc. with the name US Dollar Index, a registered trademark. It is a weighted geometric mean of the dollar's relative value of the dollar's relative value to the following cur uh, currencies: Euro, fifty-seven point six percent. So. Um, the biggest weight percentage is against the euro, which is 57.6. All right, so basically saying all of this, it's it's just comparing the US dollar to um, exactly six other foreign currencies. So let's move on. Wikipedia, um, silver. So this is cool. I just read it before the video, so I'll reread it here. Um, I think it's... Uh, it's interesting to reread the silver definition. Um, so silver is a chemical element with the symbol AG from the Latin argentum, derived from the Photo-Indo-European, shiny or white. So that's where, that's the description that they came up with for the word. And sorry if I mispronounce some of this stuff. Uh, atomic number 47, a soft white lustrous transition metal. It exhibits the highest electrical conductivity thermal conductivity and reflectivity of any metal any metal awesome the metal is found in the earth's crust in the pure free elemental form native silver as an alloy with gold and other metals and in minerals such as argentite and whatever that is chlorogerite <laughs> most silver is produced as a byproduct of copper gold lead and zinc refining so um, that's really important to note too there's there's not a lot of uh, main silver producers out there silver has long been valued as a precious metal silver metal is used in many bullion coins sometimes alongside gold while it is more abundant, abundant than gold, it is much less abundant as a native metal. Its purity is typically measured on a per mile basis. A 94% pure alloy is described as 0 0.940 fine. As one of the seven metals of antiquity, silver has an enduring role in the most human cultures. Other than in currency and as an investment, medium coins and bullion, silver is used in solar panels, water filtration, jewelry, ornaments, high-value tableware and utensils, hence the term silverware, in electrical contacts and conductors, in specialized mirrors, window coatings, in catalysts of, uh, catalysis of chemical reactions, as a colorant in a stained glass, and in specialized confectionery. Its compounds are used in photographic and x-ray film. Dilute solution of silver nitrates and other silver compounds are used as disinfectants and microbiocides. Yeah, feel, it, it, it's used a lot in the health, uh, health sector. 
added two bandages, wound dressings, catheters, and other medical instruments. So if you didn't know some of this, now you know. So that's silver. All right. We got the definitions out of the way. Um, we are now going to go look at the chart that I've kind of put together this morning. So on the top here, you have the US dollar currency index, the DXY, measured against six other currencies that we looked at, and silver, the nice, bright, shiny metal that we love. <laughs> All right. Um, so between the periods um, here of April 76, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, 76 to 1980, we see that the price of silver kind of jumped up in a major way. I'm not going to go through the numbers, right? We're just looking at the trends here. That's what's important. And the DXY went down. So it's obviously um, correlated well during this time frame. So that is what a four year time frame. And that's when we hit the major peak in, in 1980. Then we had a significant drop of silver in from 1980 to 85. So another, so five years there and a significant rise in the DXY. So again, perfectly correlated. Then we have what I found here as kind of a dead zone. Yes, it moved up and down here, and I could have broken this out because it, it, the top is 822, um, the bottom is you know three, so it's still like 100% move in the silver price down here, um, but they're not, you could see it's not like major moves like we had down here. So I'm calling this like a dead zone, the DXY kind of dropped from the top here, all the way to the bottom. Yes, we had, you know, the price of silver kind of dropped here and kind of, you know, we had a minor little peak here. Um, well, it's not minor if you were back then, and you, but that's that's a nice thing about zooming out, right? Um, so I'm calling it a dead zone. Um, and a no, it's not correlated because we had a major down in the DXY, um, but silver did not react to that the way it did before. All right, and there's probably something else related to this this time that we can look at, and I'll probably investigate that in future videos. Um, so that's between 85 and 2002. So after 2002, we had a peak in the US dollar index and uh, low in the silver price, and silver went up all the way and perfectly correlated, as you can see here, all the way to 2008, so 2002 to 2008. Then we had the DXY kind of go flat um, kind of just chop around and silver rose in a major way. So silver, so what I see here is there's maybe a wind up. Um, there's maybe a wind up in the, some of these signals, right? So the DXY kind of shot down, then it stayed down here with, you know, up and down portions here and silver really, uh, took off more kind of rewound up and hit another low on the DXY, but not lower than here. So, that's kind of a lesson here is if the DXY is at a certain level, right? It goes back up, comes back down. It doesn't have to make a new low in order for to silver to really get going. All right. And the proof, uh, proof is here. If I zoom in a little bit more between March, 2008 to April, 2011, this is not a, a big, big section of time here. Um, but you can really see that this was flat. So no correlation there. Um, but positive for silver. So, but we can, we do see though, if let's just go back, we do see that the DXY is lower here, which silver shot up. So that matters that the DXY is low. You don't see the DXY high and silver shooting up, right? Um, and then in this dead zone as well, DXY is low, right? But silver doesn't react this time. So not a positive for silver. So, all right, that's interesting, I think. Um, then here, now we're talking between March 2020, all right, which we all know what that was about, um, until, kind of got to zoom in here to see the dates, uh, June of 2021. So we see the DXY trending down, and that's when we had a rise in silver price, all the way down from, you know, 15 to 28. So we said we're looking at the price, so that's not the important thing um, in this video. And then we had... Um, the DXY kind of make a low and start trending upwards June 2021 all the way to September 2022 last year and that was trending upwards and silver was trending down and now we have since September 2022 we've been trending down on the DXY we are getting a bounce recently which has put some pressure on the silver price downwards um, but the trend is down currently and silver is trending up so 
we can see that yes, um, there is correlation. My conclusion, this is this is my conclusion. I'm just comparing two things here. Um, we can add more stuff like interest rates, would, would, which would be, uh, I think, very important. Um, many other factors. But um, yeah, I think this is when the DXY is lower, which is up here, um, tends to favor silver. That I think that can clearly be seen. So um, as the DXY drops, um, it could sit there for a while at the bottom and silver could really kind of take off. So it's less the momentum, I think. It's more the level of where the DXY is um, that gives that fuel for silver to kind of build up and go. So the longer it's down there, I think it go, except for this dead zone that we've seen kind of over here. But uh, that's kind of my conclusion. Um, you know, I think it's important to watch the DXY right now. Um, it does matter all the way, all the way back to... Um, 1970 probably 1971 right where this uh, this actually started so um, that's why there's a correlation there so until this kind of death bubble pops and then the whole system kind of shifts and we have a whole different financial system with uh, um, digital currencies for uh, from governments um, we'll see what happens so if we um, we'll just flip to the kind of daily chart here give you an idea of what's what's happening um, we have silver right now. Kind of dropping right so we're going to 2150 2150 is a very important um support zone but we have the dxy now um really starting to blast off right as we speak at 10406 kind of taking it out so this is pretty much a flag on a bull pull um kind of going up so unfortunately um it might be uh be bad news for us uh, silver bulls um as we can see here if we draw some trend lines let's draw something horizontal here right there right so we can clearly see that's a, a support zone as well right and that sits at 2084 um i was hoping 2150 would um would kind of uh, hold as support but uh, it's not looking good today if we look at the chart here uh, let me get rid of this thing so this is the chart i'm watching we bounced off of it here that's really the support zone and the other level we just identified on the other chart was like, uh, you know, 2080 down here where we get these peaks right there. Right. So we can draw this in. So it might be our next our next spot to possibly find support if we don't hold by the end of the day here. They still young, um, 1050 Eastern right now. So if we can kind of get a bounce here, this might be a might be a low where we go test here. If not most likely we're going to go to $20.80 around that and kind of see what we do from there. So if you're a long-term investor um, and you want to add, this might be an opportunity. I'm not adding anymore. I've got my position. I'm just going to hold on and, and go from there. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and please re uh, retweet uh, my tweet with this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm going to be a lot more active now in the next three weeks and I hope I can offer some value. So uh, we're actually, I'm also going to um, go through some companies soon. I want to look at the financials, kind of break it down, look at the properties, look at the... So I'm excited about that to do some research and sharing that with all of you. All right, take care. Bye.